Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to a new episode of the Kings and Sports Podcast. It's the Felix Hernandez episode number 34, or you can throw Freddie Garcia in there too. You know, we're not going to be would, too stingy. 34 pictures. So. Exactly. So we got to give a little bit of love to Freddie Garcia as well. It's going to be a unique episode. We got some niche sports and a couple of new guests hopping on. Tyler Herger will be on to talk about the PGA and live situation. Then we're going to wrap it all up with Nick Sisson and some UFC, some massive fights coming up. We'll break those down fight by fight as well. There's a lot of interesting stuff going on in the MLB. So that's where we're going to start this time. Trade deadline just about a week away now. A lot of big names being thrown around. Of course, none bigger than that big Japanese fish down in Anaheim in Shohei Otani. So we decided we'd put together five trades that we could see happening. We're not going to talk about the prospects and dig into that. We're just going to talk about the big piece of each trade, where they're going to go, why it makes sense, and so on and so forth. So we're going to go ahead and kick things this thing off. I'll start with my first trade. I've got Cody Bellinger going to Cleveland to join the Guardians. Now, a lot of people are talking the Guardians could potentially be sellers, but that AL Central is still wide open. The Twins are hot right now. They're playing some really good baseball. We won't talk too much about them for obvious reasons, but Cleveland, what they've lacked the last two years has been power bats. They do not hit a lot of home runs. They don't have that big thumper in the middle of the lineup that you are scared of. Jose Ramirez, yeah, he's very good. He's not a guy who's going to go out there and hit a ton of home runs. They went out and got a couple of guys they were hoping would do that. Mike Zanino didn't work out, and Josh Bell did not work out. Cody Bellinger has rejuvenated his career in Chicago. He's played really good with the Cubs this season, and again, in this AL Central, it is still anyone's race. The Tigers are still in it as well. If you get Cleveland to the postseason, they've got a rotation that's good enough to pull off an upset, really gives some teams some fits, kind of reminiscent of the Phillies, but they are missing a lot in that lineup. I think Bellinger could help. So that's my first trade is Bellinger to Cleveland. See, and part of me, I just, I hope Belly stays with the Cubs. I really do. I hope that they resign him, but. We're not going to get into that. Uh, my first trade uh, is Cardinals dishing Jordan Montgomery to the Baltimore Orioles. Orioles are needing some pitching help. They need a lefty badly. With John Means being done for the year, they are going to look to the trade market. There's no question about it. Arguably the best lefty available. Montgomery is owed a t- crisp $10 million dollars. At, before being a free agent next year, uh, they might be able to extend him. Of course, with how young their core is, they're hoping for guys that can help them for multiple years. But even if it's just a rental, um, this guy's got a proven track record. He is an immediate massive upgrade to one of their most blatant needs going into the second half. Yeah, I'll talk about the Orioles. I also have them addressing pitching as well in mind, but to talk about the Cardinals, it's been a disaster of a year, but I don't think they completely tear it down. I think they trim some pieces off. I, I think that are Montgomery already leaving gonna, anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Montgomery yeah. is going to be gone. And the only way that they'll get rid of some of these more controllable guys, like a Jordan Walker or even say a Donovan. They, they, they're going to need some controllable starting pitching. So I, I don't see any big splashes coming from the Cardinals. Do you see a big splash in another team who has an obvious need? That's the Texas Rangers. They need bullpen help. Aroldis Chapman's looked pretty dang good since arriving in Arlington. I think they go out and get Kendall Grayman from the White Sox. You know, I, I joked before we started recording, we could just do five trades just based on the White Sox. That team's a disaster. Texas, though, man, their pitching has taken a hit. Their offense is starting to take a bit of a hit as well. I don't think it's as much of a concern by any means necessary. Right now, the Rangers, they got the fourth worst bullpen ERA in all of baseball. It is really, really bad. Just blew a game last night against Houston with Aroldis Chapman on the mound. Grayman's a guy that can be that bridge from, say, if you have – a good outing from their starters, which are a little bit shaky right now, but for the most part of the season have been pretty good. You need that bridge guy to get it to Aroldis Chapman. Aroldis Chapman's not going to be a guy who blows too many saves how he's looked this season. Kendall Graveman, he's a veteran. He knows how to pitch in these big games, you know, did it with Houston. 
this is a dangerous guy. You and I got to watch him with the Mariners. He's very, very talented. That veteran in the back end, and you need a one-two when it gets to the playoffs. So I really think Graveman at the Texas is a really, really good fit for both parties. Yeah, you know, I'm also going to focus on the Rangers. Uh, I agree with you. They need pitching. Uh, They tried the DeGrom experience, and it went about as well as the naysayers, a.k.a. Matt King, uh, said that it would. (laughs) Uh, they did get Chapman recently. He has been very solid aside. Last night was the first time he'd surrendered a run. So I feel like if they go after a starting pitcher and are able to move one of those fringe guys to the bullpen, that that will be a similar effect. I've actually got them working with the Padres who Everyone thought they were going to go all in this year. They tried to go all in this year. It has not been working out. They are in fourth place. They are double digits in games behind under 500. You've got to start selling those pieces that aren't going to be around with you come next year when you try again, because Padres are not going through a rebuild by any means but they do need to wipe the slate clean and try again this year. So uh, I've got them dishing Blake Snell. You might even be able to get a power bat to go with him, maybe going for Hayter instead of Snell, but one of those really elite pitchers been around the block has done very good things for the Padres uh, and, and bring that success to the Rangers who are really just a, a pitcher or two shy from being a world series contender. Yeah. Some people thought the Padres were going to win the world series this year. It's been baffling how bad they've been over the Mariners. Oh yeah. 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 It's just been yikes, yikes in San Diego. I don't know how much they're going to trim, but yeah, the the question is that the question is for the Rangers is pitching. How do they get better? Nathan, you have all these being skipped in the rotation this week. We talked about DeGrom John Gray is taking us. It's it's been inconsistent for the Rangers as of late. Speaking of starting pitching and the AL West, the Houston Astros, their rotation's getting a little bit thin. You got Jose Urquidy out, Luis Garcia out, Lance McCullers out. They've got some guys who are beat up. Frombers dealt with a little bit of an injury issue this season. How about a little bit of a reunion? I, I know we wouldn't love this. I got Justin Verlander going back to Houston. The 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 all-in experiment with the New York Mets is not working. It is a disaster. And if they can go ahead and get rid of one of these guys who is making a lot of money and has not performed, they need to do it. Houston, however, they know Verlander knows how to pitch in their ballpark. He was a megastar in Houston, one of the best pitchers in all of baseball, even coming off of Tommy John's surgery. If Houston can take on a good chunk of that contract as well. They are not going to have to give up as much either. It's going to be a little bit of a give and take there. The Mets, yeah, you don't get as big of a return in prospects, but guess what? You don't have to pay that gigantic contract to a guy who really isn't helping the team out that much. Not that it's all his fault by any means. Everything's failed for the Mets this season. I think Verlander back to Houston, kind of get him back to a scene that's familiar to him a little bit more under the radar I would say compared to pitching in New York compared to Houston I I think Verlander back to Houston makes a lot of sense for the Astros if Houston's willing to take on a chunk of that contract it'd work for both sides for sure but if they're not I think the prospect ask is going to be too much from the Mets so the Astros they're gonna have to give a little bit as well see and one of my biggest question marks with that is both of the Mets star underperforming overpaid starters there's a bit of team control there and so i i i'm not sure if the mets are ready to give up somebody who might be able to help them in the next year as well because they're not tearing anything down they're they're gonna try again that's why they spent all of that money uh but it does make more sense than some other teams i know Ears have been perking up when the Mets said, uh, we'll entertain offers, but that would be hard to move either of those two giants there. I'm going to talk about the Tampa Bay Rays because they seem to drift from the hottest team in baseball to a lackluster pile of blah every, every couple of weeks. 
that injury bug is chipping away at their squad, just like it seems to every single year. They need some rotation depth to be able to stabilize themselves in the coming months. I know, starting pitching. Again, we're shocked. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to give it to them in the form of Marcus Stroman. He is has player option next year. The Cubs don't have what it takes. Both of us were kind of riding high on the Cubs this last year in the preseason. They are not making him happy enough to want to stay. If you trade him to a team that is winning as much as the Rays are, with as much as they are needing Marcus Stroman to just fall into place, do exactly what he can do, you're going to be able to sell some prospects for a guy, see how happy you can make him with a winning squad, take a shot at going deep into the postseason and potentially bring him back next year. Yeah, I personally have some feelings in this because I want Marcus Stroman to stay in the National League since he was my NL Cy Young pick, and that was yeah. out of the blue. And right now, now, I, now, what if he gets AL Cy Young just randomly? Like, what would we do? I then? don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to see him getting that. I think the AL yeah, Cy no. Young picture is a lot more crowded than the NL. Well, and Cy especially Young, if you only have a month and a half, but there's no yeah, way. <laughs> hopefully he just stays in the national league and that trade you just predicted doesn't happen for my sake. That's it. Anyway, let's move on. I've got a guy going from the AL to the NL. And this is one of those trades where I think a change of scenery can do a guy wonders. I've got Tim Anderson to the Los Angeles Dodgers. I am a big Tim Anderson fan. I really like his style of play. I like the emotion he shows. A lot of people are the guys who aren't, mainly pitchers that are pitching against him. That's fair. Now, Except this season's been a, this season's <laughs> been a down year. Yeah, you nailed it. You transitioned for me. It's been a down year for him. Except since the All-Star break, he started hitting the ball a little bit better. He's still not hitting it for power, obviously. But with the Dodgers, he doesn't really need to hit for power. With the Dodgers, Gavin Lux going down with a torn ACL in, uh, the, in spring training was a big blow to this team. Now you've got Chris Taylor kind of – stick into that one spot rather than being that utility guy, maybe the best utility guy in all of baseball when he's able to float around. Also, Manuel Vargas has not shown consistency really. And he's a rookie. He's going to grow into it, but you don't want to put all your chips on a rookie to figure things out come postseason baseball because the Dodgers, they'll be there. If you go out and get Tim Anderson as the Dodgers, you got Chris Taylor to move around a little bit more, not as much pressure on Vargas either. And the Dodgers seem to be able to take in these guys who seem broken and fix them back up. You go back to when they got Max Muncy. He did not look good with the A's. All of a sudden, he is a very scary power hitter. Chris Taylor, you and I watched him with the Mariners, didn't look anything special. Guess what? He's pretty dang good with the L.A. Dodgers. And Tyler Anderson, as of more recently, he was unbelievable with the Dodgers last season. Has not looked that good this year either. Give the Dodgers a little bit of that L.A. swagger. Get them Tim Anderson, a guy who's got that flair, because right now they've got no one with that flair for a team in L.A. And see if it works. I mean, it's a low risk because he's going to be a free agent as well. So go ahead and go get that guy. See if you can make that push because you're thinking about playoff baseball if you're the Dodgers. You're not thinking of the playoff push. You're not thinking August, September. You're thinking October and November. Sam Anderson's a guy that can help you at that stage of the season. Yeah, you know, I actually got the Dodgers making a trade as well. They've been far too quiet for far too long. And everybody knows why they're being quiet. They're saving up money for i think you called him uh the the fish of the angels which terrible terminology the big, because the big fish on the market is where if you go back and listen <laughs> okay. it flowed okay. better there. okay <laughs> unless you're saying, talking about mike trout then it works perfectly fish. yeah exactly uh there might be two big fish but tim salmon's been gone for a while so we're we're anyway back to the dodgers <laughs> these guys have three rookies pitching for them right now in their rotation That is not how you go far in the fall. Dodgers are a juggernaut. They know how vulnerable they can be if they are not firing on all cylinders when it counts. Best way to safeguard that, batten down the hatches, get a proven arm to help you. Go and starting pitcher again. I know. You know who can't wait to sell 
their proven arms. I think you said it before. The Chicago White Sox. This entire rotation seems movable right now. Yes, even Dylan Cease. Let's not get too greedy here, said no Dodger fan ever, but we're we're gonna we're gonna keep it realistic. Lucas Giolito. He's cheap as far as starting pitching rentals are concerned. He's still young enough that you could extend him longer should your Otani plans not pan out like you're hoping. You could also, yeah, yeah. You could also try to get a bona fide closer like Graveman rather than just throwing whatever young gun's name you see first on your clipboard and hope that it pans out and it usually does for some reason. Uh, the Dodgers are a much healthier team for pennies on the dollar with guys like this. Still plenty of Hollywood dollars to throw around for the, I call them the big kahuna in my notes this off season. Uh, but I, I feel like adding two great pitchers uh, is exactly what they're needing. Uh, so let's do Giolito and Graveman together. Uh, I, I wasn't sure if I was going to include Graveman. He was just kind of a side note, but nope, let, let's let's get them both. I like it. And just they've do got it on the, the fly. prospects to do it. Yeah. yeah. Just do it on the fly. Do it live. I, I like it. Yeah. I respect it. I'm glad you brought up Dylan Cease, though, because I am not going to be, you know, realistic, I guess, in <laughs> your words. I've got Dylan Cease being traded, and I've got Dylan Cease being traded to the Baltimore Orioles. Okay. There is no team that has a deeper reservoir of prospects, except for maybe the Cincinnati Reds, than the Baltimore Orioles. The Orioles have so much young talent already on their team. They're pretty good. I don't I don't see many weak spots for them as of right now. So maybe offload some of that young talent, bring in a guy like Dylan Cease. Exactly. You have that front of the rotation guy. And they're about the only team – again, besides Cincinnati, that has the prospect capital to trade for a guy like Dylan Cease because he's a controllable pitcher. He's a guy that the White Sox could potentially keep and build around. I don't think that's what the White Sox should go for. I think the White Sox need to try and bring in as many prospects as possible, build their farm system back up, hit the hard reset button on everything. And if Baltimore brings in Dylan Cease – all of a sudden, who are you going to pick to beat the Orioles in the American League? They just bullied the Rays. The Rangers seem to be falling apart. The Astros have some consistency and injury issues. We still haven't seen Gordon or Altuve for a while. It's the Orioles' time. Darn. It is the Orioles' time to shine and take the American League championship. This is a World Series caliber team if everything builds right, but I still – they need to add pitching. There is no better pitcher that I think will be traded than Dylan Cease. That would give them five righties in their rotation. It's not a bad thing. It's what the Mariners have. It, it, it kind of works. It doesn't work. Kind of. <laughs> we we want our lefty back. Come on, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? Uh, I'm thinking Marco, but. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought so. <laughs> I mean, if you're talking Randy Johnson, I'd take him right now too. But you know, <laughs> I was thinking more Robbie Ray, who's also a lefty. Yeah, yeah, that, that. But that would, you know, I, I was thinking the realistic <laughs> might be back soon, Marco. Hopefully, no, we'll fingers see. crossed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Matt, I want to talk to you about the best team in baseball. <laughs> I do. Um, the Atlanta Braves. And. What are the Braves oh, no. really looking oh, no. for? I know, I know. What are the Braves looking for, Matt? They just nabbed a bit yeah. of reliever help. That That's a plus. But they need some icing on the cake. And icing on the cake comes in one form. Some pitching depth to help them in the postseason. And a power bat, maybe a DH. There's somebody that fits both of those needs. Oh, and it's gosh. Shohei Otani. I know. Oh, no. But listen, but listen, the Braves do not have the greatest farm system right now. But the Angels are not going to get five top 50 prospects for a rental. They know that. I know that that manager says, I do not want to be the guy that traded Otani. 
this is not going to be a general manager decision. This is going to be an ownership decision, 100%. You are not going to resign Otani. I'm sorry. You are not going to make the playoffs, especially with how injuries are starting to creep up on you that seem to break your spirit every single year. Atlanta is in a very unique position where they have ridiculous team control on almost their entire big lead lineup. They could sell absolutely everything in the farm system and bring home that two-month subscription that is Shohei Otani, win the World Series, and be the front runners for re-signing him. Out of all of the teams that can make this possible, there are a few that if they just threw stupid deals to the Angels, the Angels would accept it. I don't think that this would be a stupid deal for the Braves, and it would make the Angels immediately better for the rest of the 2020s. I think it would work out well for everyone. Shohei Otani included. I want to see it. I really do. Well, that trade's not going to happen because Shohei Otani's going to sign with the Mariners first of all in the off season. He's going to join. I've I've talked about why I don't think Shohei Otani's getting traded. Uh, the Angels right now four and a half out of a wild card. I don't think you trade possibly the greatest baseball player we've ever seen that's ever played the game of baseball when you're four and a half games out because not only you're punting on the season, hold up you're punting on the season you're saying all right we're not making the playoffs you trade Shohei Otani the Angels aren't close to making the playoffs not even close no No. you're punting a lot of ticket sales as well who's gonna go pay to see the Angels without Mike Trout or Shohei Otani no one you can just go see the Dodgers play right down the road. Yeah, it's going to take you, I guess, four hours to get there from Anaheim. It shouldn't take you four hours to get there, but it's going to. Again, it's just you're you're giving up so much. You're giving up so you are and giving then, up hold, two months is what you're giving up. A lot of money. Your your ticket sales are your Oakland. Congratulations. Mike Trout ain't going to rush back if they trade Shohei Otani. Why would he rush back to another below average team? Be- <laughs> Here's the thing, though. You Do you want those ticket sales for two months, or do you want those ticket sales for two years? Because, again, you are not re-signing Shohei. There is no, no, absolutely no not. Absolutely not. Right. You are also not winning the World Series, even with Shohei. You're not complete enough of a Probably team. Probably not. Absolutely not. We said, they have a better people chance. People said similar things about the Phillies last year. They got dang close. They got dang close. They did. You get the hot Angels, in October, you don't know what happens. The Angels are not it. They are not that complete of a team. It's not happening. So the question is, do you want a future for two months worth of Otani? Or do you want nothing and keep those two months? Let's look back at the previous World Series that we've seen as of late. Phillies, Astros, Phillies weren't supposed to be there. They got hot. You go back the year before, Braves, Astros. They were okay, still two much teams more of a expected. complete team. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to get to the team that we okay, all okay. had questions about. 2020, we had the Rays and Dodgers, best two teams that season without question. The year before, the Astros lost in the World Series to the Washington Nationals. Nobody thought the Nationals had what it took to win a World Series. There were holes all over that roster, right? Right? Yep. They looked, yep. they looked dead in the water in May. They were not even close to making the playoffs. Went on a run, won the World Series. I'm sorry. I can't, I can't say that the – yeah, I've got all sorts of trust issues with the Angels. They've been – awful they've been really good choke artists for years they really have been you want to talk about wasting primes i know people throw mariners up there at wasting primes mike trout has played what three games in the playoffs Shohei otani hasn't played a single one 
So yeah, th- th- there's definitely some issues with the history there. But man, four and a half games. You got the Yankees, Red Sox, and Blue Jays in front of you. None of those teams necessarily look incredible right now. The Rays are on meltdown mode as of late. The Astros, they're an injury away from really being in trouble starting pitching wise. We're not we're not ready to phone in the Mariners year. Why are we ready to phone in the Angels? The Angels are a game better oh, than I the Mariners. Them in. <laughs> I did. I did. I almost had some of their players listed here as sell trades. Uh, two. So two. we won't talk about them. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just a 500 you team doesn't get there. Here, here's the thing though: all of those teams that you just mentioned are going to get better in the next couple of weeks. Are, are the they? Angels? Oh yes. Oh yes. Red Sox just traded Kike Hernandez. Does that make them better? You didn't no. mention the Red Sox. The Red Sox are ahead of the Angels. Yes. So four and a half games out of a wild card. How many teams are between them? They've got to pass three teams to be in a playoff spot. And almost every single one of the, I still think the Red Sox, I don't agree with it. I still think the Red Sox are buyers come this trade season. I, I really think do. The trade that got made today says different. I don't know. I, I feel like they're just making moves, but we'll see. Either way, if you're the, and the Yankees are always buyers, so they, they don't count. Yeah. If you are the Angels, are you willing to sacrifice more of your future to try to build a team around Shohei and make that season push for your last opportunity? Not if you're smart. If you're dumb, just... go ahead. Like, go ahead and waste your next five years. I, I would love to see it. I would love to see them hold on to him for no reason, get absolutely nothing, even trade some of their young guys away for people who they think are going to help only to not even play in October. But, but what if what if you trade for Shohei Otani for these prospects that don't work, that don't play good? Then you lost Otani for less than nothing. two months, still two months. You're you're going to sell tickets. and You're still in the playoff race. I, I'm willing to bet that Shohei Otani is still an angel in August. I hope he is. I think that would be very foolish of the Angels. I, it, 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 we're they're in a situation no one's ever been in. They really are. No matter how you look at it, we've never had a Shohei Otani. So we'll see. We'll see. We've argued a lot about Shohei Otani the last couple of weeks on the podcast. We will see where he ends up if he ends up going anywhere and whatever choice that is or whatever solution that is whoever's right is going to let the other one know here on the podcast so we'll 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 see how it all plays out all right we're going to move right into our august mlb team draft right now we don't have a conclusive winner for the month of july i'm up five games because the marlins stink and the orioles are playing really well so, so we don't really have a winner. So we don't know exactly how we're going to decide who picks first this week. You want to do another if, coin If play? you've got a coin, I mean, I've got a Paul who can just choose one of us to pick first. No, I, he doesn't care. All right, you got I've a coin. I've got a coin. Not a problem. Coin's better than a Paul, I guess. Yep. Ten pesos. <laughs> All right. Now... Now, I don't know which one's heads and which one's tails on here. Okay, we're going to go the Aztec calendar. You can't see that. Can't see it. I trust you. Yep. Aztec calendar is heads. Eagle is tails. Okay. Do you want to call it in the air? You call it in the air. Ready? Give me the Aztec calendar. I'm not going to wait for it to be in the air. It is the Aztec calendar. All right. I want to pick first. Okay. So the extra rule for this month is we each have to pick one team from each division. So we're going to end up with six teams this month rather than the normal five. So you got one team from each division, no more, no less. That's how it's going to go. Now, the reason I want to go first is because of the Atlanta Braves. I'm going to go ahead and take the Braves for this month. That's Again, they're the best team in baseball. You talked about it. There's no arguing that this team is so, so talented. They don't have a weak spot on their roster. And like you mentioned, not that it matters for this game, 
they're going to be good for the foreseeable future. Everyone's locked up practically. They've got talent everywhere. They're the, they're the team that every other team wants to be right now. So give me the Braves. Yep. Yep. Uh, they, they easily would have been pick number one for me. Uh, pick number two. I'm going to go with the Dodgers. Not only are they the best team in that division, but they have a significantly easier August than anyone else in the NL West. So I'm going to lock them up because that otherwise that was looking to be a very hard second in that division. And with pick number three, give me Texas. Same sort of reasoning. I still think they are the best team in that division. I think that they are hungry to get someone to help them be even stronger. And looking at Houston, I even looked at the Mariners. Mariners have a fairly easy August. Houston, not so much. So Texas, uh, I think, is going to get some W's this this month. I like that pick. I really, I really do. Uh, it helps make my next pick easier because it was going to be between the Rangers and the team I am going to choose. I'm going to take the Baltimore Orioles. I think okay. this team's playing really well. Their August schedule is not hard, but not easy. They do play Toronto six times. They play the Mariners and Padres, two disappointing teams. Houston's a good team, but then they play teams like Oakland, Colorado, and the Chicago White Sox. So I think really ends up evening out. And I think the Orioles are in for a big push to try and pull away with that American League East. Next up, it's not as easy. Here's where we're going to have to really start thinking about each of these picks. And what's interesting is that we do have to pick a team from each division. You don't want to leave a team there for the taking from a division that has just not much really after it. So I'm talking about the centrals and you couldn't tell what, where I was leaning. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to take the Cincinnati reds though. I'm glad. I think the reds have an easier schedule than the Milwaukee brewers. Which, I mean, unless you're going to go reach deep down and take the Cubs, I I think you're going to have to take the Brewers from the NL Central. And I'd rather have the Reds than the Brewers. So give me Cincinnati. Give me the young guys who I think are going to try and wake back up since really the only team they're struggling against is Milwaukee, who they're pretty much done playing. Yeah, Uh, I was actually really afraid you'd go AL Central because – uh, I, I know it's it a lot tough. tighter of a race there, but if you look at those schedules, Guardians, Tigers facing some very difficult teams, Twins might have the easiest schedule I was seeing. I'm going to go with the Twins. It's not even close in that division. I was really torn between going Twins or, or Rangers first uh, because <laughs> – there is no close second in that AL Central. So I, I'm I'm really happy that you went uh, NL Central. I, I, believe, I believe every division has one team picked out of it now, correct? I believe you are correct. Yes. Yes, yep. they do. Okay. So now I'm going to have to start getting your your seconds here which means we can't steal each other's picks from now on. So that kind of makes it easier. Uh, I'm going to go. I am kind of torn here because the Marlins are a much better team, but their schedule is horrendous. So give me the Phillies in the East. I like who they're playing against. I, I gave them a big leg up from the Marlins. So uh, yeah, yeah, I, I'm liking those picks. We're, we're good with that. Now, like you mentioned that AL central is just a mess yep. really after the Minnesota twins schedule wise, the AL West isn't exactly much better in terms yeah. of strength of schedule. However, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take the Houston Astros. The, the Jordan's Jordan's right around the corner from coming back. That's going to add something to this lineup. And sorry, Jacob, I just don't trust the Mariners right now. I, I can't trust the Mariners at all. The inconsistency. I'm, if I pick them, I'm picking a 500 team. I think the Astros can do better than 500. So I'm going to have to take Houston. That's fair. 
How are Mariners doing in July? Are they 500? They're better than 500. Do you think they're going to continue to be better than 500 through August? I think their schedule's easier in August than it was in July. But they lose to the teams they should be. Though. That's what worries me. I know. I mean, I know. you could have taken them over Texas. But no, I couldn't. I, I guess. I guess no, you chose not to. Know. So, so yeah. we'll, I'll take Houston. Yeah. Next Who else up. You got? It's again. I'm saving the AL Central for last. I don't know if you could tell. I'm really, really scared of the schedules in the AL Central. The Arizona Diamondbacks worry me as well. They are not playing very good baseball right now. They play a lot of division opponents. I, I can't touch them. They also play Cincinnati, play a lot of the Dodgers, as I just mentioned. So I, I can't really trust them to go out there and have a lot of success. I'm going to take a shot. This is where I'm going to take the shot and try to hit a half-court heave. I'm going to take the San Diego Padres. Okay. Okay. I don't think they're going to be big sellers, so they're still going to have a lot of talent on the other side of the trade deadline. You and I both agree they're they're not tearing everything apart. They might lose a couple of players, but they're right. still going to have plenty of talent. And looking at their schedule, I mean, yeah, they play the Dodgers, they play Baltimore. Everything else is fairly manageable. I mean, the hardest opponent besides those two is probably Milwaukee. Yeah, they play Arizona. Again, Arizona's not playing well. So I'm going to take the chance and say that the Padres have a good month, hopefully their best month of the season. Give me the Padres. Yeah, yeah, I like that pick. Honestly, I wasn't sure if you were going Padres or Giants, one of those It was sand between those two. <laughs> names. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's what I would have been torn between two. The NL Central, I am torn between the Brewers and the Cubs because the Brewers are a better team. They have a more difficult schedule. Not terrible, to be honest with you. I mean, they play the Padres a couple times, so those are some guaranteed wins. No? Okay. I figured. Shouting out the uh, team you just went after. Okay, I'm going to ignore fair. that. I'm going to choose to ignore that. The Cubs have a good core. They have an easier schedule, but I don't think that core is going to stick around. I think they're going to sell a little bit. So I am going to have to go with the Brewers. I was even looking all the way down at the Cardinals. You know, they've started heating up a little bit, uh, but looking at that schedule, I don't think it's going to last. They are definitely going to sell. So no, give me the Brewers. I, I, I like it. And then for the last pick of the draft, this is the steal of the draft. I'm just saying, uh, give me the Tampa Bay race. You know, they're one of the most winningest teams in baseball have a pretty easy schedule. Uh, the fact that you swipe the Orioles early just lets me kind of sneak right in with the race. So I like it. Last pick. You don't know how bad I want to take the Kansas city Royals. I want to so bad. They play Oakland and Pittsburgh. Everything else is just rough, and I don't even trust them to be Oakland and Pittsburgh. I'm, I'm going to take the Guardians. I, I think that they're the second-best team in that division. Uh, they, they have a fair balance of home and away games. Like you said, they're not going to play a ton of bad teams, which is concerning, obviously, in this staff. But, man, they do, they do play some good teams at home. They get the Blue Jays at home. They get the Dodgers at home. That, that last series with Minnesota could be a big-time series. Again, th there's no winning when it comes down to who you're picking from the AL Central after the Twins. So I'm just going to take the best team. Uh, that's Cleveland. I'm going to take the Guardians, who I think, besides Minnesota, is the only really viable, trustworthy option. So there are teams. I got them right here. I've got the Braves, Orioles, Reds, Astros, Padres, and Guardians. You have the Dodgers, Rangers, Twins, Phillies, Brewers, and Rays. Still up in the air who wins in July. Right now I've got the slight edge. We'll see if that stands pat. Hopefully it does do the rest of the month. So that is going to do it for our baseball topics. We'll talk some MLB trade results on the next episode since it'll be after the trade deadline. But coming up after the break, we will start our kind of niche segments. Tyler Herger going to hop on. I'm going to hop into the studio as well so I can get away from this chilly T-Mobile park out here. It's it's very cold here at night, but I'm going to go hop in, talk to Tyler about some PGA and live tour, and then I will bring on Nick Sisson to talk some big UFC fights. That's coming up on the Kings and Sports Podcast. 
including the best prices and selection in the area, a professional staff that helps every step of the way, and financing options that make it all possible. Like six months, same as cash OAC. It's how Home Carpet Warehouse has held down the Best of Lewis County Award for Best Flooring Store for nearly 20 years. Home Carpet Warehouse, where the deals are flooring, and now cabinets too.